My brother, my brother, my brother, it's another Black History Month, and I'm proud to be wearing, representing my HBCU, Oakwood University. I'm a proud alumnus. Yes, and is. guess what? Guess what? It is Black History Month. And Christian, we didn't make up the theme, That's but true. the theme, Dr. Josiah, Pastor Josiah, yes, for sir. Black History Month is Black Resistance. Oh, Black oh. Resistance is the national Black History Month theme. It's not something you or I made up. That's right. But that's the national theme for Black History Month. And we just adopted that here with the Conscience and Justice Council. As you know, the Conscience and Justice Council is made of advocates from across the country. But uh -huh. it kicked off. It kicked off with regional conferences. And we just want to thank our brothers and sisters, our colleagues, uh -huh. Council in terms of representing them here tonight for all their work, all their hard work and getting the word out. And want you to know to have people tune in to the Conscious and Justice Council every Friday night. Every, every Friday, Friday night. Every Friday night at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time, we will have a Black History celebration focusing on the National Black History theme, focusing on the theme, Black Resistance. And our tagline is what? Speaking truth to power. Speaking truth to father. Pa <laughs> speaking, speaking truth, truth to power. To I got you. Pastor Josiah, go ahead, Pastor yes. Jay. All right, man. Well, listen, man, we want to welcome everybody, everybody to this program tonight. Uh, of course, we need for you to be digital evangelists tonight and go ahead and share if you're watching on YouTube. Share if you're watching on Facebook. Uh, let somebody know, let your friends know, let your family know uh, that every Friday night, as, as Dr. Woods uh, the third said, listen, man, we're going to have a show that is good tonight. Uh, we are blessed to have a, a, a preacher of righteousness. So it's going to be a, a, a preaching service. We'll comment later. Uh, but the following week, we're going to have a panel um, and we're going to we're going to be we're going to be doing some stuff every Friday night. Uh, and so just come on at 7 p.m. Uh, Central Time, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, uh, and, and, and be blessed, and be blessed, and so we can be empowered, we can be encouraged uh, as, as a people. Back to you. All right, all right. Now, what we want the people to know, what we want people to know, and we're going to put this up there so people can see it. I don't think they're able to see it. Let's do it. Can we move us? Nope, I'm not able to move us over the way I want to. So okay. we will do it a different way. But what we want people to know is that the theme is Black Resistance, Black Resistance, speaking yes. truth to power. We're going to alternate preaching and a panel discussion, preaching right. and a panel discussion. Mm -hmm. This Friday in two weeks, we'll have preaching. Yes. Next Friday and two weeks later, we'll have a panel discussion. And so the preachers will come in their own way. And I don't even want to tease the title. Because when oh, I saw it, I just threw my hands up and started showing. <laughs> I, I can't did. afford to tease the title. <laughs> so I don't even want to tease it. You just got to wait <laughs> and tell people to come and hear it for yourself and oh, let no. your skin just bubble. I'm just yes, going to say it that way. Yes, just sir. let your yes, skin sir. just bubble. But next week, we're going to talk about Black Wealth. Black Wealth. We have Elder Joseph McCoy, um, you know, President Emeritus, Executive Director Emeritus of the Regional Retirement System. We have yes. Linda Ammons coming, who's an attorney at Dean Emeritus from Windener, Windener um, University out there in Las Vegas. We have Daryl Thomas coming from Memphis, Tennessee. I mean, we're going to have a show where people can hey. come and be blessed. So I'm excited yes, yes. about the show. Marvin Earls coming from the state of Colorado and the Colorado Startup Fund. We'll have uh -huh. a great show. Then in two weeks, we're going to have Pastor Marvin Mc, McNichol, McMichael, McMichael from Cleveland, from Cleveland, Ohio, who is the executive director emeritus for the Cleveland Baptist Association. He's filling as the interim. Um, uh -huh. Pastor Jerome Hurst, our CJC vice chairman, will uh -huh. be hosting uh -huh. that evening. And That's he was right. the one that secured Pastor McMichael for us. And we're in for a treat. We're in yes. for a treat. Yes. And then yes. last but not least, though, the last weekend, House on Fire. A House on Fire was edited by Dr. Maury Jackson, who's at La Sierra University, and Nathan Brown. And we'll have some of the authors and contributors for that. And that show will be hosted by Dr. Zach Plantek, Dr. Zach Plantek from Loma Linda University School of Theology. So we're excited about the programming, excited that our colleagues are there to support us. 
Yes. And we're looking forward to a dynamic time as mm-hmm. we examine the theme, Black Resistance, Black Resistance. Beautiful, beautiful, man. Let's do this, man. Let's say a word of prayer, and then I'll intro, uh, introduce the speaker of the hour. And we'll play some music, and we'll get a word from the Lord, if that's all right with you, man. Amen, amen, amen. Uh, all right, let's bow our heads. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to be in this place and in this space tonight. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us the opportunity to be your servants uh, and to uplift our people. Uh, We ask that you would uh, be with the speaker of the hour tonight, Dr. Keith Burden. Lord, I pray that you would uh, touch his lips, Lord, with coals from off the altar. Lord, may we be blessed. Uh, May our hearts burn within us. And may we not just be hearers of the word and watchers and listeners to your word, but may we be doers of your word. In Jesus' name we pray that all God's children said amen and amen. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce to you for the first time for some and uh, and, and 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 to others who may know him, uh, our good friend, Dr. Keith Augustus, Augustus Burton. He is a member of the graduate faculty at Advent Health University. He previously served as the founding director of the Center for Adventist Muslim Relations at Oakwood University and as chair of of the Peace and Social Justice Program at Claremont Lincoln University. He holds a Doctor of Philosophy in Religious Studies and Classical Rhetorical Theory from Northwestern University. A former editorial contributor to the Huffington Post, he has published widely in the areas of social justice, uh, Afro-diasporic religion, and Black culture. He serves on the advisory boards of Adventist Peace Fellowship and the Institute for Pastoral Community Engagement. His interfaith work has been recognized with an award of merit from the Associated Church Press and the Rabbi Jeffrey Ballon Memorial Interfaith Award from the Huntsville Interfaith Mission Service. Most recently, he was named by Christianity Today as one of the top 25 religious figures who have shaped African-American faith over the past century man this 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 is good this whatever it is is going to be good tonight uh amen and so after our music our special music uh brought to us from the linwood boulevard seventh day adventist temple uh here in kansas city missouri the next voice you will hear will be that of dr keith augustus burton hear ye the word of the Lord. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our
praise the Lord, saints of God. Let us march on till victory is won. It's indeed a privilege this evening to a fellowship with the Conscience and Justice Council. And I want to just express my appreciation to Drs. Josiah and Woods uh, for the invitation. This is indeed a great honor. I know some of you have had a long day. I don't want to make it too much longer. And so I'm going to ask if you could turn in your Bibles, wherever you are, to 1 John 2, 15 through 19. 1 John 2, 15 through 19. And here we read these words. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. But for everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. Dear children, this is the last hour. And as you have heard uh, that the Antichrist is coming, even now, Many antichrists, many antichrists have come. This is how we know it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not really belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But their going showed that none of them belonged to us. Meditate with me for the next few minutes, please, as we reflect on the sermon simply titled, All Skin Folk Ain't Kin Folk. All Skin Folk Ain't Kin Folk. Shall we pray? Precious Lord, take our hands and our minds and reflect your will to your people this evening. Help us to get the strength so that we can march on till victory is won. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for your Shabbat. We thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, we offer this prayer to you as the saints of God together say, Amen. And amen. All skin folk ain't kin folk. You know, when John pens his first epistle, he writes to a reality. There's a real situation that's taken place. There appears to be division in the community. Uh, this community did not reflect the ethos of the first believers that we read about in Acts chapter 2. Uh, those who sold all their possessions and were in one accord, those who had a concern for uh, social justice, a concern for each other, those who together looked at the wicked system that was oppressing them and had learned to chant down Babylon. Uh, no, in the church to whom John writes, some were no longer chanting down Babylon, but they were enchanted by Babylon. Enchanted by Babylon's wealth, Babylon's prestige, Babylon's privilege. Enchanted by Babylon's capitalistic excess and the stratified structures. And as John chastises these, he refers to them as antichrists. Uh, now, I know oft times when uh, we think about Antichrist, specifically in a specific denominational context, we uh, think about one person, but John refers to Antichrists in the plural. Why does he uh, refer uh, to these defectors as Antichrist? Well, they are Antichrist because they are against the Messiah. They are against the kingdom agenda. They're antichrist because in embracing the principles of Babylon, they're now extolling exploitation. They're applauding oppression. They're celebrating supremacy. They're cursing the Christ. They're maligning the Messiah. 
And as we see in verse 19, the, uh, the fact that these antichrists went out means that at one time they were in, they were once apart. You see, they were from the same neighborhood. They uh, went to the same school as the others. They attended the same uh, church. They all communed together around the same barbecue grill. And uh, they had the same relatives who were victimized by the system. They had the same exposure to oppression. But here, John says, even though they had a, a similar environment in which they were nurtured, they are not of us. In fact, they were never of us because all the time uh, that they paraded in our environment, they were yearning for Babylon. They had a secret fantasies of power, hoping uh, for acceptance by the system that was oppressing them. They were just waiting to escape. Hey, they even despised their own parents, despised their own skin. You see, all skin folk ain't kin folk. And although John is talking about a body of believers this evening, even as we celebrate Black history, we want to apply his advice to the black community. Or oh, skin folk and kin folk. We were reminded of this just last month when we heard the story of the horrific death of uh, Tyro, Tyree Nichols of Memphis, Tennessee. I'm sure when we heard the news, at least I can confess to myself, when we heard the news, we probably profiled his murderers. Hmm? Uh, we assumed that, uh, that those who caused his death uh, shared the same characteristics, the same demographics of those who uh, took the uh, life of uh, Dante Wright in Minnesota, of Andre Hill in Ohio, of Manuel Ellison, Washington of Rashad Brooks in Georgia of Daniel Prude in New York of George Floyd in Minnesota of Breonna Taylor in Tennessee of Patricia Jefferson in Texas of Ora Rosser in uh, Michigan of Stephen Clark in California of Bolton John in the Texas of Philando Castile in Minnesota of Alton Sterling in Louisiana. We assumed, hmm? Confess if you hear me. We assumed that white police officers were at fault. Who else would carry out this lynching with the impunity of those protected by qualified immunity? Hmm. So in predictable fashion, we, we waited for a statement from the Fraternal Order of Police. You know the statement that often comes out as they enforce that blue wall of silence. As they spew racist propaganda with insensitive tropes like Blue Lives Matter. Uh, we waited for the exposure of Tyree Nichols' executioners. But all we got was crickets, silence. <laughs> uh, the truth is, we weren't ready for the reveal. Uh, we could hear Jack Nicholson scream in our ears, you can't handle the truth. <laughs> and when the time came, we found out that it wasn't Appalachian rednecks or card-carrying members of the Ku Klux Klan. But this heinous, unthinkable lynching was the wicked work of five seasoned black officers. Not just any old officer, mind you. No, no. These were uh, from the elite scorpion unit. Those who had received the highest levels of training, but in this moment, they uh, appear to be nothing but bullies with a gang mentality who had learned to suspend their humanity. And in that moment, they couldn't see their brother. Oh, I hear John. They went out from us, but they were not of us or skin folk, <laughs> ain't kin folk. 
I'm sure many scratch their heads and ask the question, how could this happen? Befuddled. How could brothers kill a brother? As if he were some kind of piñata. How? Hmm. Well, you know, as I reflect on an explanation, I have to apply some critical race theory. Yeah, yeah, I know there are some folk out there like, oh my goodness, that critical race thing that my governor here in Florida just banned. Oftentimes when we think about critical race theory, we listen to the chants of those racist opponents who want to deny the reality of history. But I'm here to let you know that when we delve into critical race theory, it deals with all history. You see, it's concerned about truth with a capital T. And critical race theory is not about downing white people. It's not about downing the oppressor, but it's about uncovering truth. The truth about the evils perpetrated by white folk and black folk. And as we apply the critical race thinking to what we saw in Memphis, Tennessee, we see that those five officers have plenty ancestors. Stay with me now. I know even as we celebrate Black History Month, many have mythical fantasies about historical Africa. I remember as a young man in my teenage years leaning towards Rastafarianism and uh, one song I used to love a whole lot as it was when Jaffers made our land so shall it be in the end with a peaceful village and children running around and that's the image that I had of our ancestral past. But you know, that mythical image is as socially or mythically constructed as the concept of Africa itself. You see, Africa is a social construct that Europeans placed on a geographical region and somehow have many believe in that it refers to some sort of ethnic grouping. <laughs> a kind of nonsense that uh, doesn't take into account the divisions of Europe that led to Brexit and the current confrontation between Russia and Ukraine and uh, the other forces trying to ensure that the division continues. Africa as a geographical unit consists of over 1,000 linguistic groups. Some estimate it could be as high as 2,000 and even more cultures. And when we look at Africa historically, uh, we have to say that Rodney King's question is still pertinent. Uh, can we all just get along? Because the history says that there is never, there has never been an era where there was this uh, peace and unity that many think about, deep divisions. Some of us took the time to see Woman King. Yeah, I went to the movies. I saw Woman King twice. Uh, Violet Davis put in a spectacular performance. Loved it. Great story. Made me feel good. But you know, looking at history through the lens of critical race theory, some of us know that uh, Dahomey, and I know a part of this was touched on the movie, but Dahomey uh, wasn't a land of saints. Dahomey was one of the main kingdoms that sold Africans to Europeans. And not just Dahomey, the Canaan born new of Cameroon. The kingdom of Alada in Benin, the Aro Confederacy of Nigeria, and, and the Ashanti of Ghana. I'm not saying it was every uh, Cameroonian or every Beninian or every Nigerian or every Ghanaian, but there was an official policy of the governments 
in those regions that legalized the capture of fellow Africans in their cell to those who were taken into places where they would be enslaved. Yes, that's the reality. And that spirit of betrayal and distrust did not stay on the constructed continent of Africa, but it came to the new world. Uh, study uh, the history of of resistance, we're celebrating resistance this month. Study the history of resistance and we see that there were many attempts towards freedom in this land that were thwarted by black people. Gabriel Prosser's rebellion could not even take off because two slaves just had to tell the massa, Mosby Shepherd. Denmark Bessie, may have been successful had it not been for George Wilson and Joe LaRoche who felt that uh, the massa had to know <laughs> what their friend was about to do. And as we see uh, most recently in uh, Antoine Fuqua's Emancipation starring Will Smith for Underground created by Misha Green and Joe Pakaski. Uh, many blacks were willing participants uh, alongside the slave patrols, uh, uh, the precursor to our modern uh, uh, police departments. They, uh, they were active participants in, in chasing down enslaved people who had escaped so they can take them back to their plantations. And this was not just something that took place on the American soil. I think about Tacky's revolt in 1760 on the island of Jamaica. Uh, Tacky's revolt uh, that was uh, spreading like a wildfire around that nation. Almost got to a point where uh, they uh, had enough people involved so that they could have overturned the British on that island. But what was it that put a stop to Tacker's advance? <laughs> Some of you may not want to hear this because I know many people like to celebrate <laughs> the Maroons. But did you know that the Maroons gained their freedom in Jamaica by making a pact with the British that they would return any runaway enslaved person. And Tacker's rebellion failed because the Maroons, yes, black Maroons, sided with the British to quash their own brothers. And most recently, as we saw in Judas and the Black Messiah telling the story of William O'Neill's Betrayal of Fred Hampton. Many skin folk who sold their souls to the FBI and other government agencies and planted themselves in uh, the Black Panthers and uh, SNCC and SELC and the Nation of Islam. I know it's not nice to hear, but it's the reality if we want to understand what took place in Memphis, Tennessee. The truth is, saints, just like Africa being a social construct, so is blackness. Hear me now. Uh, blackness, as we know, it is uh, the result of slavery. It's a result of forced intermingling. It's, it's, it's really ethnicity that even now is currently in construction. As I look at you right now, I am Igbo and I am Yoruba. Two people groups that have historically had beef. Mm? I am Zongu and Ashante. Mm? I have a little bit of in the belly in me so I could also be Shona and in the belly. I am Hutu and Tutsi, I am competing tribes residing in one body. And for those who are optimistic, this should be reason for peace. Because those who are formerly enemies now find unity 
in one person. Those of us in the diaspora have the power to be unwitting agents of reconciliation for the entire continent. However, for some, this is not a reason for reconciliation, but sometimes buttresses their desire for division. And even as I look at the type of division that yielded the death of young Tyree, I have to acknowledge that ethnic division is foundational to white supremacy. Both when it comes to internal whiteness and intra-communal ethnic associations. As we see in Isabel Wilkerson's cast and Daniel Orkin's The Guarded Gate, a whiteness is really the invention of a small group of wealthy Nordic aristocrats who really want to protect what they have. The 1%, if you please. Now, now, others are invited into whiteness. And sometimes it's a slow process. At first, they just wanted the Nordics. And then after a while, even as they realize that their strength in numbers, the, uh, the Slavic were invited, then the Baltic, then the Ashkenazi and the Gallic were invited as they, as, as they uh, got their membership in this uh, privileged club. But even as they enjoy the privileges of whiteness, there were many in the waiting room hoping to get in. <laughs> Stay with me now. There are many there auditioning for inclusion. <laughs> uh, now, some of them have been admitted to the periphery mm, uh, based on, on, on their skin tone mm, or their origin. They weren't born here. They came from the Caribbean, and so they're, uh, they're not regular blacks. <laughs> Someone knows what I'm talking about. Or some gain access because of their choice of politics. And so Clarence, you know, you're, you're welcome to the club. Ben, you know, come to the club. Herschel, come to Diamond and Silk. You got a place there. Candace Owens, come on in. But then there are some, stay with me now, who are tricked into the circle. And you know, I would like to just highlight the reality that many of our brothers and sisters of the African diaspora enter law enforcement to make a difference. They've seen the way in which their people have been abused and they enter law enforcement because they want reform. They want change. They want to be agents of true justice. They want to protect their communities. They want to make a real difference. But oftentimes the constant struggle that they're faced with is the appeal to reject their identity. They're fed with propaganda. Propaganda is saying you're no longer black, but you're blue. <laughs> And the, uh, the ironic thing is that this shade of blue that is placed upon them is closer to white than it is black. Uh, so they want them to come to that perimeter. Hmm? Uh, not as close to the center as the, the Slavic and the uh, Baltic and the Ashkenazi, but, but close enough that they're distinct from their blackness. And the sad reality is that some buy into this rhetoric. And when they buy into this rhetoric, they have no problem in othering their brothers. And five who bought into this rhetoric took 
the precious life of young Tyree Nichols. They were possessed by the spirit of racism. They were with us, but not of us. They were skin folk, but not kin folk. Hmm. Wrapping up now. You know, many are appalled by what happened. Hmm. They say they would never do this, and I don't know how many people would actually do this. But you know, even as we point fingers, this is also an opportunity for what I call a mirror moment. Mm -hmm. A mirror moment to question how many of us are willing agents of white supremacy. Especially in the church of the living God. How many miseducated Negroes are there? How many of us passively observe the abuse that takes place on a daily basis? You remain silent when uh, Dr. Ed Zinker would stand up in the annual council of the general conference and make a statement that says critical race theory is of the devil. I say, Dr. Zinker, you're my friend, but that statement is of the devil. How many of us remain silent when our president, Dr. Ted Wilson, speaks out against expressive worship, saying there's no room for that in the church of God? Let me tell you something. I don't know what God he's talking about, but it's not the God of Psalm 150. Mm -hmm. How many of us are willing to speak out against GYC's anti-black agenda? How many of us are willing to speak out against the church manual statement that claims that jazz and other hybrid forms of music is not suitable for refined Christians, refined equals white? How many of us, hear me now, mirror moment, how many of us are willing to continue agitating the church so that they can see the damage that they do continuously promoting this image of a white Jesus in our Sabbath school quarters and other resources. How many of us, we're talking about speaking truth to power now, how many of us will be willing to speak uh, to those who make decisions for our dear university, my beloved Oakwood University, about that statue that stands in the middle of campus where a white Jesus is being aided by Simon of Cyrene. Have you given any thought to the implicit sermons that are being provided each day for students who have to pass that monument to white supremacy? Hmm. Here's a challenge, saints. Because ultimately, as I reflect on the real issue, it's more than skin folk or kin folk. Uh, because the real issue is sin folk. <laughs> you know, we have all been born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We are all impacted by the virus. And we all show symptoms sometimes as we draw divisions between African-American and Caribbean and African East Coast and West Coast. And even in our own neighborhoods, uh, is it Brooklyn or the Bronx? 
there's a pandemic among us. And if we really want to create an environment where kinfolk behave like kinfolk, then we must be intentional. Must be intentional by acknowledging our own prejudices. We must be intentional by deconstructing those symbols of miseducation. But not just deconstruct, but reconstructing a new future on the basis of truth. The truth that is grounded in history and the Holy Spirit of God. We must move forward as we recognize the seriousness of our struggle. As we understand that if more skin folk are to behave like kin folk, we have to fight together for justice and expose the divide and conquer strategy of the dragon. Oh, we have responsibility to elevate those kingdom principles, those principles that embody a kingdom worldview. And my challenge this evening is for each of us, especially those who consider themselves skinfolk, not to desert our kinfolk, but to understand our role in this village. For as we love to sing, saints of God, we've come this far by faith, <laughs> leaning on the Lord, Trusting in his holy word, he's never failed us yet. And the strength that we need to continue is ours. The hope that we need to move forward to create this beloved community where skin folk automatically embrace their role as kin folk. That hope is grounded in the God of our weary years, the God of our silent tears, the one who has brought us thus far on our way. Oh, not all skin folk are kin folk. But if you're skin folk, please be sure, please be sure to be kin to your kin. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for reminding us that a community is intentional. We thank you for giving us a way in which we can understand why things like this happen. And ultimately, Lord, as we move forward into the light, I pray that you will keep us forever in your path as we walk with you. Walk with you until that bright day when you shall make your appearance and we shall be folk together forever. We thank you, Lord. Receive these words, we pray in Jesus' name. Let the saints of God together say amen and amen. 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 Doc, thank you. Thank you for the word, man. It, it, it was it was a tough word, uh, but a needed word, a timely word. Um, you know, many of us, many of us wrestled with with what we watched. And I, to be honest, I just saw clips from CNN and some of the news um, I, I haven't, I haven't watched the whole thing, man. My, my spirit can't take it. I can't, couldn't take it, mm -hmm. but, but we understand, we understand that, that not all, not all skin folk are indeed kin folk and sin is at the root. Sin mm -hmm. is at the root. And, and, and we appreciate you, you know, doing some, some, some hard history lessons, man. You know, we, we, we don't talk about it much, yeah. you know, regarding the tribes, um, you know, I mean, I've, I grew up, you know, in the Caribbean understanding the slave triangle and, you know, you didn't, you didn't, 
you didn't put too much stock on what was actually going on on the continent itself. Not mm-hmm. all of our skin folk yeah. were 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 kin folk. Um, and 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 we we appreciate you, man. We appreciate you. Um, we appreciate you. I, I see people commenting in the chat. It was a it was a hard word, but a but a right right on time word, a real word, amen, 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 amen. and an honest word. And we appreciate you, man. So. Thank you. On, be, on behalf of the Conscious and Justice Council, man, we, 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 we appreciate you speaking truth to power. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let Elder Elder Woods go ahead and share. He can unmute his his mic and 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 share his words as well. Well, uh, we have a preacher in the house oh, of righteousness, man. and we had a preacher who spoke truth to power and confronted us. Yes. You know, Dr. Hyvest Williams says, don't give me those sermons that are going to tickle my ears. <laughs> give me a sermon that's going to bring conviction yes. um, to my heart that's going to challenge me. What yes. must I do to be saved? And we are just so grateful oh. for oh. what our, 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 our eyes have seen and our ears have heard through God's manservant. Dr. Uh-huh. Keith Augustus Burton. I just like saying the whole name. <laughs> the whole name. Is it all name? <laughs> you know, because it feels like I'm doing a complete word. Uh-huh. And I want to thank him for thank sharing you, his expertise, yes. but also challenging those who have to speak tomorrow that you got to be prepared yeah. and you got to be ready uh-huh. and you got to study. It's not it's no yes. time for no sideline uh-huh. sermons. So just right. try to be deep in the word and uh-huh. preach a prophetic uh-huh. word, a prophetic yes. word. Because people are looking for the truth so much. Yes. And you provided that for us. And you can yeah. see from across the country in this virtual space of getting texts. He was the perfect person to kick off. You know, Amen. fasten your seatbelt, strap yourself in. Yeah. You know, you're going to get a yeah. word. And we just thank God Amen. once again for allowing you. you to be used and not only being used, but allowing the Lord to trust you with his message and the consistency that you provide each and every time that you take the mantle um, to proclaim God's word. Every time. It's appreciated, respected, admired, but also timely, you know, in terms of what has happened this week. I mean, this has been a week. Yes. And we have done, you know, we did a show on Tuesday night. I decided I did a show Tuesday night Uh with regards to the case because Right. Nobody was really talking about it. Yeah, I saw some. We, had, we yeah. had some great people. Um, mm-hmm. Dr. Makiba Claggett Garrison mm-hmm. was on today, you know, cheering you on. Dr. Burton, she's a chaplain, a preacher in her own right, uh-huh. a bioethics chaplain. Um, we had Pastor Drew, Nathaniel Drew at Breath of Life. I said, Drew, everywhere you go, you you collected controversy. You were in Charlottesville. <laughs> Charlottesville, yeah, it sure was. <laughs> and now you in Memphis. We, <laughs> sure we, was, we scared where you're going to be next. But yep. he was there. And then we had Terrence Jones and Crystal Foster and Chief Ken Scott. And it was just, you know, excellent, you know, with excellent. regards to that. And then for you to come in here and kick off the theme for our Black History Month and uh-huh. just make it practical and make the uh-huh. scripture come alive. Came alive make man. us understand that there's antichrist or mm-hmm. plural. It's not just the devil, but there's some antichrist. <laughs> Because mm-hmm. anyone who's of a demonic spirit is an antichrist. I mean, yeah. it was right there That's in the right. Bible. You put it there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got a yeah. problem. I can't have a problem with you. I got mm-hmm. a problem with the word of God. Come so, on now. Come on. I just Come appreciate on. you just putting it out there because we have some antichrist in the church. Come on. And you called him out. You by got, name. Listen. And if, and if I, I was cringing. Me, hey, listen, hey, listen, man. I, I said, I said to myself, that question, how many of us? Because a lot of times we look we look at the Memphis five police officers, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We, we we identify and, and you did a, an, an awesome job, Doc, of, of of highlighting, you know, slavery, the, the, the slave trade, even the revolts that took place in Jamaica yeah. here yeah. on the continent. But man, how many of us shy away mm-hmm. and 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 go silent when we should be agitating and speaking up? And yes. and and letting our voices be heard and looking out for our kinfolk, mm-hmm. you know how how many of us for whatever reason, you know, mm-hmm. some people may do it for position, some people may do it for money, some people, mm-hmm. you know, they don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. But mm-hmm. but I think I think that's a and you know as I look at the gospel, that's a salvific thing. People don't mm-hmm. think about it. They say, well, you know, that's a social, 
No, because in Matthew 25, you know, that's Jesus. It. That's it. <laughs> yeah, you, you can be lost over not doing anything. That's I don't, it. I don't that's know if you it. want to add anything, Doc, before we let you go, but. I mean, Matthew, yeah, Matthew, Matthew 25 is my anchor when it comes to the gospel, yes. you know, and of course, I'm a theologian, and so I do like to dig into doctrine, etc., but I also understand that at the end of time, when I stand before the throne of Christ, he's not going to ask me to explain any deep, intricate um, you know, nodes of doctrines as much as I may like to delve into the Greek and the Hebrew, but he's going to say, when I was in prison, where were you? Come on. When I was in the hospital, where, when I was homeless on the street, you know, did you just step over me on your way to church? Uh -uh. Or did you take the time? When I was that, that, that kid in your neighborhood who you knew every day was coming home and my parents weren't there and had nothing to eat, where were, how many times did you invite me to your house? Come on. And give me a meal. Come you on. know, that's what really matters. And so, yeah, doctrine's yeah. important. It is important. Yeah. Uh -huh. But that's a, sort of an add-on. The book of Hebrews says, you know, <laughs> you guys yeah. are a little nip too, you know, let's 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 yeah. chew a little meat. <laughs> right. You know, but 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 the the um the metal of that kingdom person yes. is how willing are you to live like Christ lived? Mm. How willing are you to mm -hmm. touch the untouchable? Yes. How willing yeah. are you to share your meal? with yes. that person who has none. Yes. And yes. that's what kingdom living is all about. How willing are you mm. to yeah. speak out against injustice? Mm -hmm. How willing are mm -hmm. you to walk across the Edmund Pettus Bridge not yeah. knowing if you're going to make it to the other side? The other side. Mercy. How willing are you to sit Mercy. at that lunch counter not mm -hmm. knowing if you're going to end up having um, a record, a, a police record <laughs> that follows you for the rest of your life? How willing are you? Mercy, mercy. And I'm glad you said that because even our leaders, you know, when you get in these positions and you're looking to go up, you really have to have a, you have to make a conscientious decision. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be an agitator? Or are you going to acquiesce? Mm -hmm. Because there's a mode that you feel you have to fit if you want to be GC president or mm -hmm. NAD president mm -hmm. or what have you, a compromise mm -hmm. or what have you. You can't mm -hmm. be too loud or be too brash. Because yeah. then you're too black and you can't have to get back. You can't yeah. move you forward. <laughs> yeah. Mercy. Yeah. And here, here, Mercy. here, you got to make a conscientious decision. Yes. When you're speaking truth to power, and as black folk, we speak for everybody. Mm -hmm. We go condemn the police, whether they're white or black. We don't care. You yeah. do wrong. We got something for you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. We got something for you. That's just how we are. But yeah. we have some folk who want to get ahead and will compromise. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or will try to mitigate. Yeah. You know, to put themselves in a position uh -huh. because for whatever reason, we can't have multiple black leadership. We got to uh -huh. have one. It's like the King theory. After MLK, yeah. we can't have like 150 or 200,000 black leaders. We just got to have one go-to person. And uh -huh. you see it when it comes to elections. They just want to deal with a small group of people. You see when they want to get something done in the community. They want to deal with a small group of people. And they always try to identify one, two, or three people who speak for the whole black race. There are not one, two, or three people who speak for the whole black race. Uh -huh. Forget on an international scale, not uh -huh. even a national scale, but uh -huh. not even a local scale, let alone even in the church. Mercy. <laughs> yeah. You know, as, as you say that, I remember a, a, an old hymn. I do like I do like the old hymns, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, but, yeah. but there was a, there was one, you know, as much as I critique the fact that the hymnal is filled with a whole bunch of stuff from Europe, I mean, I mean, those are the things that nurtured me. Yeah. And um, there's this one, you know, as a youth hymn, bright in the corner where you are. Amen. Yes. Okay, it's bright in the corner where you are. And wherever we are, uh -huh. We have a responsibility to be that leader. That's right. Um, who was it that said the greatest one in the world is the one of men and women who will not be bored or sold, who in their inmost souls are true and honest, whose conscience is as true to duty as the needles of Paul, who will um, not yeah. fear to cause sin by his right name, who will yeah. stand for the right, right in the heavens. heavens. You know, and uh, one thing about leadership, we often look at folk like um, MLK and, 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 and X and um, so the Carmichael and uh, Fannie Lou Hamer, and we say these, 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 these were courageous people. But let me tell you something about a courageous person. A courageous person is one 
who has learned to push through their fear. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. If, 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 if you have no fear, you, 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 you don't need courage. Sorry. Wow. You don't need courage, but it's a person who's learned to push through their fear. So many of us in the corners where we are, when we see things happen and we, and, and, and we're fearful and we're waiting for that person to stand up and, and be that leader, be that voice, not realizing that the person who eventually does it is also feeling fear. Uh -huh. And yes. maybe we can be that person to yes. stand up. Maybe we can be that voice. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. They, there is, and we're going to close out. It's eight o'clock mm -hmm. uh, or my time, nine o'clock where you are. But, but that fear is, is a godly fear. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not, it's not a scared fear. Um, and it's real. I've, I've, I've felt it, you know, that the, the long night, the early morning, because you mm -hmm. just, but, mm -hmm. but, but the spirit inside of you says, I must. I yeah. must for my brother. I must for my sister. Mm -hmm. I must, mm -hmm. you know, to be silent. You know, you, you feel like you're sinning. You know, you, you feel like you're committing a great sin, man. And, and I praise God for, for leaders like yourself, Doc, you know, who, who poured into some of the young brothers. I'm calling myself a young brother. I'll be 50 <laughs> this year. But, but you poured into some of the young brothers, man. And, <laughs> and, and God is raising up, you know, brothers and sisters who, who don't have, God has not given us, the spirit of that kind of fear, mm -hmm. but, 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 but willing love to put power, love and right. power, sound mm -hmm. like willing to push through the, mm -hmm. the nervousness. That's the, that's yeah. what I would use. There's a nervousness mm -hmm. that's there, but, but, but the courage of God, man, to, to push forward, man. And, and, and we praise God, man. We praise God. If, if we don't do it, who will? And if, mm -hmm. and if not now, when, mm -hmm. you know, so, mm -hmm. so again, man, we appreciate you. We, Appreciate you for answering your phone, being <laughs> willing. You know, we listen. There's a lot of good people out there who sometimes you can't get them. You know, they run, they hide. But but man, you're always willing, man. And I appreciate praise you. the Lord. Praise the we Lord. We appreciate you. Once Listen. again, we want to thank Dr. Burton for coming on the Conscious and Justice Council Black History Celebration, kicking us off in style with the message: All skin folk ain't kin folk. Once again, you can get this message if you missed it, or as one of our persons said, I'm going to listen to this when I come home. He Amen. says, I'm going to check this out when I come home. Well, guess what? You can listen to this when you get home, whenever uh -huh. you are, and we encourage you to listen to this uh -huh. because it was a powerful word, uh -huh. a truthful word. Yes. And if you're looking for a word, this is where you want to be. And if you don't have a sermon tomorrow, you need to play this one. Play this one. There you Don't go. repeat it because it's Dr. Burton's sermon. It's what the Lord gave him. Now, if you got to get a sermon for yourself, we're praying for you right now. So don't <laughs> preach his sermon and say it was your sermon. <laughs> let's, let's give the Lord credit for what he has done through his manservant. Amen. Amen. His manservant. Let's give God credit what he's done for his manservant. And knowing what he has done for his manservant, he can do for you. But you yes. got to put the time in and the study. Instead of regurgitating, let the Lord bless you and anoint you for yourself so that you can give a word on tomorrow or this weekend. Once again, thank you so much, Dr. Burton. I hope to hook up with you in a couple of weeks when I'm down there. I'll That's make sure good. I reach out. But I want to talk Please to do. you. I want to talk to Dr. Reeves. And I want to talk uh -huh. to Dr. Doggett. So That's I just get it. And then I'll be with my man, man my man, man, my main man, my main man. Uh, Pastor Carl Ware, my Bronco. I call him a Bronco. He's not my brother, yep. he's not my uncle, but he's a Bronco. And that's that's a good man <laughs> God over there. So looking forward okay. to thank Great you. Man. Man. Right. Again, thank you so much, Dr. Burton. And we look good forward to you. getting you. you back on for another discussion. Josiah, we got to talk about upcoming programs. Yes. Upcoming programs. You know, this whole month we're doing, I got you. Sorry, let me get this thing right. I want to no share problem. my screen. But we have, I pre repeat, we have. Um, a social injustice emancipation um, Bible study. Our brother, our brother, uh, none other than the attorney himself, Dr. James, I'm sorry, Jackson Doggett. Jackson Doggett mm -hmm. is going to do social justice and emancipation. It's another Bible study guide done by the dynamic duel of Dr. Calvin Rock and uh, Dr. Mervyn Warren. Dr. Calvin Rock and Dr. Mervyn Warren. Um, Elder Jackson Doggett has them um, coming on a program each Sabbath, I repeat, each Sabbath through Allegheny East, we would encourage everyone to be a part 
of this program. That's every Saturday night. I'm sorry, Saturday afternoon, February 4, 11, 18 to 25 from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock p.m. Once again, Elder Jackson Doggett will be doing this. He is the Parl Director for the Lake um, Lake Region Conference. Allegheny Lake East Region. Conference. Allegheny East Conference. <laughs> Allegheny, Allegheny, Allegheny East Conference. He's a pastor in his own right and an attorney in his own right. And he will facilitate the discussion with the different writers, our very own Dr. Olive Hemmings, um, Dr. Delbert Baker, Dr. Barry Black, and Dr. Mark Woodson. So once again, once again, every Saturday during the month of February from 4 to 5 p.m., go to the Allegheny East Media Ministries YouTube channel and you will be able to interact with the writers of Social Justice and Emancipation. If you do not have your copy of Social Justice and Emancipation, you can get it, the download from Advent Source for 99 cents. Or if you want it mailed to you, I think it's a dollar forty nine. But get the download so yep. you can engage. I repeat, you can engage yep. in this worthwhile program done by Jackson M. Doggett Jr. Esquire, Parl Director, and a member of the Conscience and Justice Council. We also we also want to present another thing that's taking place. Another thing that's taking place, and this has to do with the CJC. And then once again, this is our Black History Celebration. We are so excited about this celebration that we are having here and want everybody to be involved and engaged oh. on Black resistance. We have preaching on tonight and we'll have preaching again in two weeks, which will be facilitated by our very own Pastor Jerome Hurst, who is the Parl Director for the Allegheny West Conference at our CJC Vice Chairperson. Um, panel discussion next week, um, focusing on Black wealth, and then on three weeks from tonight, focusing on a house on fire. We'll have some of the writers on a house on fire. Um, that will be facilitated by our very own Dr. Zach Plantak from Loma Linda University, a house on fire. You can pick up the book. You can pick up the book um, through Amazon, through Amazon as well. Once again, if you haven't gotten the devotional, Let Justice Roll, partnership between Conscience and Justice Council and The Message Magazine, please, please, please pick up the book. Pick up the book at Amazon.com. You can get it at Amazon.com. It can be an ebook through Kindle that you can get from Amazon or through your Apple store. So I want you to be sure to pick that information up. Well, we have been blessed with what we heard yes, today. We yes, I'm we excited. Have. We will be on fire for a while uh -huh. with regards to that. But go to our YouTube channel and look at our past programs. Yes. Look at our past yes. programs and you will find empowerment. And it's something for everyone. You know, it's not just for Blacks. It's for whites, right. for young, That's for right. old. We're bridging uh -huh. the gap. But there's something for everyone. And I just want to thank the Conscience and Justice Council, my colleagues, for putting together excellent programming and doing something to make a difference to ensure people feel valued, respected, and appreciated simply because they're made in the image and likeness of God. Amen. 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 Man, this has been good, man. And uh, we look forward to seeing everyone on next week. Same time, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central. You know, go ahead, watch this again. If, you know, he has some heavy stuff at the beginning. And so it was like, a, it was like we were in class. Um, but it, but, but it was rich and, and we know that everyone will be blessed. Feel free again to be digital disciples and share, share it, YouTube, share it on Facebook. Uh, let's spread the word, man, so that we can encourage one another. God bless you and have a good night. Goodbye, everyone. All right.